Good morning and welcome. Morning. Sunday is the third Sunday of the Easter season, and our worship is a reminder uh, that platitudes uh, don't help us. Uh, we find meaning, real meaning, in really the, the central message of Christianity. And, and it's that message that is the focus and, and where we're turning our attention, as always, uh, this morning. Uh, our services contained in the service folder will begin with the first hymn. That's number 466, Christ Has Arisen, Alleluia.
Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to be the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death. By his resurrection to life, grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal joys. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The congregation may be seated.
Our first scripture lesson this morning is written in Acts chapter 3. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people came running toward them in utter amazement in the area called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why are you amazed at this? Why are you staring at us? As if by our own power or godliness, we have made this man walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and disowned in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. You killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. We are witnesses of this. And on the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus that has strengthened this man, whom you see and know. This faith that comes through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, just like your leaders, but in this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the mouth of the prophets, that is, Christ would suffer. Therefore, repent and return to have your sins wiped out, so that refreshing times may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus, the Christ, appointed for you. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 150. It's setting B. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our second lesson this morning, which will also serve as the basis of our sermon, is found in 1 John chapter 1 and the beginning of chapter 2. This is the message we heard from him and proclaim to you. God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him but still walk in darkness, we are lying and do not put the truth into practice. But if we walk in the light just as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. 
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. My children, I write these things to you so that you will not sin. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate before the Father. Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the whole world. The Word of the Lord. Be to God. Please rise. The gospel this morning is written in the 24th chapter of Luke's gospel. It's part of the events of Easter evening. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were terrified and frightened and thought they were looking at a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. Because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they still did not believe it because of their joy, and while they were still wondering, he said to them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written, and so it must be. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Look, I am sending you what my father promised, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. The congregation may be seated. We'll continue with hymn 459, Christ the Lord is Risen Again. After, after the second verse, the children will be invited to come forward for a lesson directed to them. We'll continue after that children's lesson with verse 3. So hymn 459, Christ the Lord is risen again. Children are invited to come forward. Good morning. 
morning, everybody. I need two volunteers. Two of you that can read. All right, guys, come on. Who wants this? Wyatt here, Gabe here. Which of you wants this? All right, stand up, Gabe. All right. Oh, you're going to make me get up. Um, all right. Here we go. Now you need to turn around. Um, yeah, we're just, we're going to make sure. There. Can you see me? Didn't think so. All right. So read this. I can see you smile. That was, that was the, really? Look? All right. What? Wyatt, come on. Go ahead. Read it. Slightly. Yeah. Okay. So what what were those directions for? All right. You can sit down. What were the directions for, do you know? Well, it it was the same on both sheets, but it was directions from up here to get to the bathroom back there. Um, why couldn't you read it? You, you couldn't see. Uh, under that blindfold, what was everything? Yeah, it was black. It was dark. That's why you couldn't read. You were, you were in the light. You weren't. The f second lesson that we had this morning... This is the message we've heard from him and proclaimed to you. God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. Okay? So what God is telling us, it's like what Wyatt had. It was in, in the light. We could hear it. We could read it. could understand it. Sorry, Gabe, but what you had... Well, in God, there is no darkness at all. In other words, what he's telling us, in the dark, we can't hear it, we can't understand it, it's, it's just not there. You know, you think about the, the message that we've got as Christians. We've got something that connected to God is, it lights up the world. But everybody outside of Christianity doesn't have it. It's like they're in the darkness. Did, when I read it before, did you catch what that is? It's in verse 7. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We've got that, and in the light, we can share that with people that don't have it. Because again, you had no way of knowing that until you heard him read it. That's like what's going on in our world right now. The world has no idea about what God has done and what God says unless those in the light, Christians, unless we tell them. That's the wonderful opportunity that you and I have got. And, and that's, that's part of what this, this lesson from 1 John, and 1 John 1 and 1 John 2 is getting at. We've got a great opportunity as people that are living in the light to tell people what they need more than anything else. They need to hear that Jesus gave forgiveness and eternal life because he gave his blood for us. That's, that's what it's all about. That's the center of things. And, and we, 
We get to have that. We get to share that. And, and that's what unites us, but that's what unites everybody. We're united around what God has done for us in Jesus. So let's pray about that. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving your life for each of us. And then thank you also for the opportunity that you give us to take that good news and to share it with the world that's in the dark, the world that doesn't know what you've done. Help us every single day uh, to live our lives in a way that people want to listen to us when we go to them and share with them that most important, that most meaningful message. We ask that in your name. Amen. All right, you guys can go back to your seats and we'll continue them with verse 3 of the hymn. Mercy and peace are yours from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The portion of God's word for our consideration this morning is our second lesson from 1 John and 2 John. We focus our attention now on words that you heard earlier this morning a couple of different times. So 1 John 1, verses 8, 9, and 10. If we say that we have no sin... We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. These are God's words. My friends in Christ, I'm sure most all of you have well, many of you, if not all of you, have seen that bumper sticker on cars that probably zip by in front of you, uh, that coexist bumper sticker. There's two different varieties of it that are out there. One has three symbols for different religions on it, and that's the older one. It's a symbol for Christianity, one for Islam, and one for Judaism. And the thought behind that bumper sticker is that, obviously, that we should all just get along. Because the reality is that all religions, well, we worship the same God. At least that's what the person behind the sticker would say. At very worst, that sticker is pretty dishonest, pretty misleading. At best, it's just uninformed. You know, if you asked an adherent to these three religions, 
to take the emotion out and just look at what they taught and what they believed and then compare the three, you would say that there's really not a lot of common ground in that. They all look at things differently. Judaism and Islam might look at things similarly in that ultimately, bottom line, it comes down to what we do. But Christianity is the exact opposite of that. It's all about what somebody else did for us. That sticker is more or less saying that all the religions of the world have at least some meaning. There's something that you can take from them. And because, well, because our world is craving meaning, people look at that sticker and say, well, just get along, because then, then there's meaning to life. You see, people, again, are looking for meaning. They want there to be a reason why things happen in this life. They want there to be a reason why for ourselves. We're using up the oxygen. They want, they want there to be a reason why we exist. Well, as Christians, we've got the most meaningful message in the world. It's a message that isn't saying, you know, try really hard, because if you try hard, then you can do this. It's a message that's based on two truths, two truths that do unite the world. One is that we are all sinners. The other is that we are all saved because of a sacrifice. Now, the scripture is very, very clear. Think of those, that first paragraph that is printed in the folder, think of a couple verses, 6, 8, and 10. So if we say we have fellowship with him, but still walk in darkness, we are lying and do not put the truth into practice. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we say we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. Look around us, because what you see very much backs up what those verses say. I went down to Madison Thursday and Friday. Thursday, going down, I, I set my cruise, set it at 74. I was wrong. I admit that. I broke the law. Because the law says, you know, those signs along the side of the road says the speed limit is 70. I was wrong. At the same time, I'm going to say this. I think every car out there on the road that day passed me. And that includes the trucks. The trucks, the semis that were supposed to stay in the right lane, they were all passing me too. And I would look up and, and then could see the guy in the cab looking down and just shaking his head. I only say that not to get myself off the hook for doing the wrong in the first place of going too fast, but to show that those passages that I read, they're exactly right. We've sinned. We've all sinned. Not just me, but everybody that was out there on the road that day. And just judging by as many of you that has, has laughed, it's probably the rest of you too. I know it's the rest of you. Romans 6 is very clear. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, the last verse that I read there makes it very clear too. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him, we make God out to be a liar. 
God can't be fooled. We can't try to hide something from him and think that maybe he's not going to know because he knows us. He knows our, what we would call shortcomings. He knows our failures. He knows the times that we don't do what he tells us to do. He knows that, and he knows those times when we try, in essence, to fool ourselves, and fooling ourselves into thinking that we can hide not just those things we've done wrong from him, but we hide it from ourselves. You know, so often we fall into that trap, and, and what I mean is, we so often try to convince ourselves that what we did wasn't so bad. In what I was saying about the speed limit, you could see it, right? But everybody else was doing it, not just me. We try to convince ourselves it's not a bad thing. But you know, when it comes to what God's expectations are, it, He tells us to be perfect. He tells us to be holy and to do both those things just like He is. Take Romans chapter 13. This is the very first verse of that chapter as an example. So you, you think about our relationship to the government. The Lord tells us through St. Paul, everyone must submit to the governing authorities. So if we're to submit that speed limit sign that says 70, that's what my crew should have been at. There are plenty of times where we look at that and then think to ourselves, well, everybody else is driving faster and they're not pulling them over, so the speed limit must really be 77 or 78. But that's, again, that's trying to fool ourselves into thinking that what God says, obeying the law, is up to us. It's something that we can can take or leave depending on how we feel about it, whether we think it's justified or not. Think about what Peter and the apostles ended up telling the Jewish leadership and us. In Acts 5, they say, we must obey God rather than men. Now, it's pretty clear uh, from that situation and from the rest of Scripture that we're sinful. Uh, think about what we admitted at the beginning of the service. We do this every Sunday. Every, every Sunday we gather together. We, we read those words that are found in 1 John chapter 1. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. All we can do is confess our sin before the Lord, ask His forgiveness, beg His forgiveness, because we've sinned against Him. Part of that sin is convincing ourselves that we know better. But that's why Jesus came. That's why He came and walked on this earth. And the best news of that Think about what John 3 tells us. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. It's not just you. It isn't just you that he came to save. It's everybody around you. And that is a truth that unites. You see, we're all united around that truth that we are all sinners. But we are also united around that truth that we are saved from that sin because there was a sacrifice. And that sacrifice is the one that God himself made happen when he sent his son into this world. Think about the sacrifice that took place. Jesus Christ offered his perfect life into death for you and for me. He gave his body and his blood 
so that you and I would be forgiven. Think about the life that he led. He was perfect in every way for all those times that you and I aren't. And he offered that perfection on the cross because that is the only thing that God would accept for our sins. And the result of that is that we have fellowship with God. It's an eternal fellowship. Our sins are forgiven and he wants us at his side in heaven. We have that fellowship with each other. All, all of us that know what Jesus has done for us and rely on that, we've got that fellowship of knowing that we're forgiven, we're going to be with our Savior in heaven and nothing is better. But again, it's not just yours. The result of what Jesus did isn't just something that you have. Jesus came for the world. What he did is bigger than just for you, as great as that is. It's for everybody. And you get to hear that every Sunday. One of the greatest privileges that I've got as a pastor is to stand up in front of you. Not now. Not in a sermon. But at the beginning of the service, to, to share with you those words of absolution, the, the great news that we are forgiven by God. And, and we allude to these words in 1 John chapter 2, every service we get together. You know, the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sins. Think about what our lesson it said his he sent his only son jesus christ as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world that's it's what we focus our attention on every service you are sinners sinners condemned by god and there's no hope for us. But you've been redeemed by the blood of the sacrifice that was made for you when God himself sent his son into our world. It's not just you. It's not just me. That is all the world. That's two truths that unite this world that we're in. It unites the world because it's not pitting one against the other. It's not separating people. It's not saying, well, it's for you and not for me because I don't need it. It's saying we're all in the same boat. We've all done this. Jesus did this for every single one of us. That's a message of, of unity. Now, my friends, that being the case... Live that. So much of the meaninglessness of the world around us, so much of the, the need for that coexist bumper sticker is because people don't live that truth, because we don't let it breathe in our lives. It, it's not something that people look at us and say, that's what you're about. We live. We live the faith that the Lord has given us. Think about what people see. When people look at us, they see the worst in our lives. They, they see the worst because, quite honestly, that's what we end up doing. Think about the first couple verses in our lesson today. If we say that we have fellowship with him, but still walk in darkness, we are lying and do not put the truth into practice. But if we walk in the light just as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Too often we live 
That's what walking means. We walk around, we live like, like we're in the dark, like we're lost in unbelief. We don't live so that we have opportunities to, to share that message of the light. Or we live in a way that when pe- we do have the opportunities to speak it, people don't want to hear it. They don't want to believe it because their assumption is you're not going to back it up by what you do anyways. John told us, I write these things so that you will not sin. He's not oblivious to the reality that we have a sinful nature. But he's writing to remind us that you know what God's expectation is. You know the way that he wants you to live. And that's according to his will. You do the things that he declares to be good and right. You know, that's what you want to do too. That's what you want to do because as a redeemed child of God, you want to live for him. You want to do his will. You see, we've got reason to coexist. And I'm not talking about watering down what we believe or ignoring the differences that are out there. But the reason to coexist is that we've got the most meaningful message in the world. And as we share that message, it's a message that brings everyone together. Jew, Muslim, Christian, and anything in between and on the other side. It's a message that unites the world. You know, last week, I was talking about the truth that God has told us through Abraham that one of his descendants would be a blessing to all the families on the earth. You think about the way that Judaism views Abraham. You know, he's one of the patriarchs. He's up there. They revere him, right? Islam is the same. He's con- Abraham is considered a, a prophet. He's considered one of their shining lights. They would get behind him. We know how we as Christians see Abraham. Theoretically, all three religions should be able to get behind Abraham and what God told Abraham. And that reality of what he told them, everyone's going to be saved through one of his descendants. We needed to be blessed. We needed to be saved because we're sinners. And we're saved. We're blessed by the sacrifice that descendant, Jesus Christ, made. Again, That's two truths that unite the world. We're sinners saved by a sacrifice. Sacrifice of Jesus. Amen. Now please rise. Now may that peace of God which far surpasses all human understanding guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join now to confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's printed in the service folder. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
You have searched us and known us, O Lord. You understand our thoughts from afar. You are acquainted with all our ways. Such knowledge is too wonderful for us. We are grateful for the accounts of witnesses who saw the resurrected Lord with their own eyes and touched him with their own hands. Most important of all, because of his resurrection, we know that when we confess our sins, we are assured of your forgiveness. O Lord Jesus Christ, as you open the minds of your first disciples to open, understand the scriptures, Send us the power of the Holy Spirit so that we may be able witnesses to your resurrection. Grant your continued presence in our nation. Clothe us with power from on high to help us proclaim the promises of our Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, on this happy occasion, we praise and thank you for the grace by which your servants Larry and Lois Shara have been sustained through the 54 years of their married life. Under your providential care, good days and evil, health and sickness, and all other experiences have bound their hearts ever closer to each other and to you, their Lord and God. Let the thankfulness which fills their hearts this day be acceptable in your sight. Cause the bond of love which unites them to grow stronger with the passing of time. And when they shall come to the end of their earthly pilgrimage, give them, together with us all, a place in your heavenly home where we shall honor and praise you and the Son and the Holy Spirit throughout all eternity. Amen. At this time, we would ask that our offering would be brought forward. We continue this morning with the three verses of hymn 713, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Hymn 713.
Please rise. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We'll close this morning after... You may be seated. We'll close this morning with hymn 746. I love to tell the story. We'll sing verses 1, 6, and 3. Hymn 740. 746, I love to tell the story. Good morning and welcome. Good to have you all with us this morning. If you are visiting with us and didn't sign our 
friendship registers before. Please send our guest book on your way out so we can acknowledge your visit and then do please come and see us again. Uh, reminder that there's a fellowship hour downstairs. Uh, the Shara kids are, are doing that this morning in thankfulness for Larry and Lois's 54th anniversary later this week. So uh, please join us downstairs for that. Uh, we've got our verse of the day this morning. That is the first thing on our list. It's at the beginning of the service folder. It's also probably up on the screens. So John 20, verse 31. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Uh, please read that with me. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Uh, thank you. Just a couple reminders this morning. We've got on Wednesday the regular schedule, catechism class at 4, and in instruction class following that at 7. And then on Saturday, there's an LWMS rally. Everybody is invited to that, ladies and guys alike, at St. John in Baraboo. That begins, uh, registration begins earlier th this time, 9 o'clock. Uh, we plan to get started very soon thereafter. Um, Chris, if you wanted to make your announcement, please. There's a sign-up sheet that was put up on the bulletin board on your way out this morning, too, about the potluck, so please join us for that. Um, it, I know this has been out for a couple weeks already, but uh, just judging by numbers that are back there, most of you didn't realize that this was available, so there's a new copy of the Forward of Christ that is available. P feel free to grab one of those on your way out. And then the last thing we've got this morning is our Wells Connection. I if you remember... I had this note about the Wells Connection in the bulletin last month. Played the wrong one last month. This is the one from March to get us caught up. So talking about the, the Way congregation in Virginia. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. 
The work of Wells Home Missions comes down to one thing, proclaiming the saving gospel to those who know their Savior and to those who don't yet know him. And by the grace of God, Wells Home Mission churches around our synod continue to do just that as we enter year two of planting 100 new mission churches and enhancing 75 existing ministries over the next decade. Dan and Savannah Scheffel are new Wells members in Fredericksburg, Virginia. But prior to that, they were no strangers to Christianity. We grew up in the church. I've served in a church my whole life. Before coming to a Wells church, they both served on their local church's staff until a few years ago when their church experienced some internal problems that led Dan and Savannah to leave behind both their work, community, and their church family at the same time. It was lonely. We had moved here for that church and leaving there, that was our community, that was our friends, that was the whole reason we lived in Virginia and left our families. Um, and it was, it was isolating and, you know, how do you stay close to God when you're leaving a place where you should have been growing closer to Him but you felt further and further away. Thanks to a simple invitation from a friend and the work of the Holy Spirit, Dan and Savannah were led to visit the Wells Home Mission Church in their area, the Way Lutheran Church. Would you join me in our confession centered around a remembrance of our baptism in your worship guide? The Way has been worshiping in rented spaces since it launched seven years ago. And now they are putting down roots by buying and renovating a building of their own. It's so easy as you grow as a church to maybe get a little distracted with our capital campaign, our building project, our first church. And so we remind ourselves all the time, keep the main thing the main thing, which means holding out the mission that Christ gave the church, sharing the gospel with our community continually, and gathering ourselves around it. And the way's emphasis on the main thing was exactly what Dan and Savannah needed. One thing that surprised me when I sat down with Dan and Savannah was really their passionate interest in our church body. They wanted to ask about our doctrine of fellowship and just how that plays out in real times. I like the way the sacraments are valued and treated within the Lutheran Church. It's definitely refreshing. Closed communion was an entirely new concept for me. I had never heard of it. <laughs> and I had to read a book about it. But it means something. It's not just something we do quarterly and everybody wears a suit that Sunday. It's, we need this. This is God's forgiveness. And how great is it to partake in that? It's not just a tradition we do because Jesus did it with his disciples and told us to do it. This is meaningful. This is healing. This is forgiveness. Through the Way's Bible Information class, the Lord opened Dan and Savannah's eyes to what the Bible says about salvation by grace through faith in Christ, the Lord's Supper, Christian marriage, and infant baptism. This new biblical understanding of baptism led them to baptize their baby girl, Ingrid. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was so meaningful, and it just, it felt like full circle, because, you know, 2019 we felt so lost, and I didn't know if we'd ever find a church that felt like home and that was truly teaching God's Word. And there we were all these years later. Dan and Savannah have since moved back to their hometown in Pennsylvania to be closer to family. And they say that they've had a difficult time finding a new church home there since there isn't a Wells Church in the area. We really want to have um, a, a Welsh church in our community that can be there to serve and be a light and be um, home to the families where we live. In fact, they have been so impacted by their experience at The Way that they have started to ask about how they can get involved with Wells Home Missions in their community. If there was an opportunity for a core group to form and for us to plant a church in downtown Johnstown where we live, we would absolutely love that. The initiative to plant 100 new home mission churches 
and enhance 75 existing congregations by 2033 continues to be moving forward by the grace of God. At wells110.net, you can see more stories of individual souls who are being impacted by Wells Home Missions, as well as learn about how you can be a part of this effort.